everyone. My name is Derek Swain. I'm currently a graduate student at Cal State University, Chico. I'm working closely currently with Dr. Kim Jackson to complete a thesis investigating the application of game-based learning to different contexts and different courses. Um, I'd like to talk more about the theme of trust that Audrey and Ulrich already started, specifically trust in a digital landscape versus one of simply a classroom. Um, obviously, I study games, so that makes me the, the digital guy, the gaming guy, as I sometimes go by on my WordPress blog site. Um, a couple points that were laid down that I found particularly interesting were the fact that uh, school is designed to do something to you. It tells you what you need to know and how you should behave. And then Audrey asked, do you trust school? And I feel like for a various reasons, more and more in this day and age, the answer to that question is no. And I'm not sure that that's okay, um, or good, really. Um, trust is interesting in that regard um, of education. And it doesn't play out the same way as it does in a game, which is also fascinating to me. So what do I mean by that? Um, in a game, for example, the most often cited game in gaming studies, which of course is World of Warcraft, the massively multiplayer online role-playing game, currently with, what, 15 million subscribers that all pay $30 month after month to continue playing. When you play World of Warcraft, you're expected to engage with other people. There's very little that you can do in the game by yourself. And in point of fact, the game is very boring if you want to play it by yourself. Yourself. One of the things that you can do with other people is called raiding. Um, when you raid, you go on a boss fight, basically. This boss fight is designed to be far too hard for any person or small group of people to do by themselves, thus encouraging you to collaborate with a lot of different people. Now, another part of this rating um, dynamic is that you can do it with people that you know, you can do it with people that you've met in the game, or you can choose to be randomly placed and do it with completely random people. Regardless of that choice, when you show up in that context under the banner of ready to fight that boss to defeat this evil that plagues our world, there is an inherent sense of trust. The fact that you are all there, the fact that this is a game means that it is possible to do um, and that you're expected to do it too. And in a sense, you all trust each other to help save the world, right? And when this happens, um, you build what's called a cross-functional affiliation, James G's term for it. And a cross-functional affiliation you all have different roles. So think of World of Warcraft again. You have different classes, different kinds of characters. And in this type of um, community, what happens is you are expected to know very well, intensively, as G would say, what your character is, what they can do, when they should do it, and how. Um, that being said, you're also expected to have what he calls an extensive knowledge, which is more general rather than deep, a knowledge of everyone else's character, their timing, their abilities, the optimum order of that as well. And if you don't have this, you are outed as a newcomer. And there is a very political sort of arrangement that goes unsaid where people don't work with or collaborate with or save the world with people that don't know what they're doing in terms of that. And that's really one of the interesting um, kind of dissonances that I see in terms of gaming and education in person, which is you show up on the first day of class and there isn't trust. And that's a problem. In fact, one of your first jobs as a teacher is to build that community, to build that trust that will later prove fruitful for reasons like collaboration, teamwork, group work, peer critique, whatever. Um, but if your class doesn't know each other, they can't help each other, essentially. Um, which is also interesting because 
of the advent of these new digital classrooms, teachers as talking heads, right? You listen to a lecture, you take a test, you write an essay, and you never really even meet the people in your class or the people who are running it. And it's in this way that I feel like technology can, has the potential to rather, I'm sorry, um, to afford us more trust. And in so many ways, it isn't. Um, it affords the instructors a sort of new trust. You can see everything about your students. You can enable tracking to see who clicks on what and when on your website. You can see when a student turned something in. You can see how long they worked on it. You can see who else collaborated with them on it. You can see the timestamps for all of those things. And yet, that same sort of visibility is taken away from our students. They can't see any of that information. They don't know how long it sits in our um, box or whatever um, before we actually open it and look at it or before we give feedback on it or before we interact with it. Um, they can't see any of that same information about their peers or co-players as they would call be called in my field. Um, so it affords us the ability to build community and yet I feel like it could be used differently to do it better. Um, it's actually something that connects to what Sherry Turkle said in her TED talk. She said that we are alone together. Never has humanity been so interconnected by things like social media and technology. And yet all it's really served to do is drive us further apart. So we communicate now in such superficial ways that we don't listen to each other anymore. It's something that Jane McGonigal calls ambient sociality, which means that more and more people are enjoying playing games or learning in proximity to each other, but not actually with each other. Um, this also plays into another crucial aspect of gaming, which is feedback. Feedback means a lot of different things. Um, in education, feedback is helping a learner grow, right? But feedback can also kind of connote information. Information should be on demand and just in time, says Jane McGonigal, James G., Kurt Squire, uh, Katie Salen. All of these people elaborate on the importance of getting feedback or information at just the right time. Um, and technology can do wonders with that because we all have access to it. Well, most of us have access to it. That's a different issue. Um, so learning is socially mediated, Vygotsky would say, right? Um, we all serve as tools to one another to help each other become someone who is better at doing a certain activity. Um, we can't do this without some sort of feedback. Um, but we can't provide each other feedback or be that more capable other for each other unless we trust each other. To trust each other, we should probably see each other. When we see each other, we should probably know each other's names. All sorts of things play into this issue of trust. And yet, technology is becoming this almost Foucauldian surveillance device, I feel like. And one of the reasons why... I feel like players in games don't have this impediment is because one, they're not expected to, and two, the technology is built for them, not for the teacher. So much of the technology that we see in classrooms is instructor-centered, but one of the most paramount things in my field is, especially when it comes to learning, is that it's all about the learner, not the learned. So this is all student-centered. Gameful is actually a term that Jane McGonigal has recently come up with as a response to my discipline's aggravation over the term gamification, which implies you are healing something that is boring, that is uninspiring by making it more like a game. This doesn't work. If you don't believe me, I welcome you to find an activity which you find repulsive, add points on a leaderboard, and have somebody else keep track of your points on that leaderboard, and 
then tell me whether or not you enjoy that um, activity any more than you did prior. Gamefulness is actually taking something and making it focused around you, what you want out of the activity. Activity, activity easy for me to say. So you create what's called actionable goals. And based on those goals, you deposit earnest effort into achieving those goals. And you should taste some semblance of success after endeavoring to accomplish these goals. That is gameful learning. It's what you want. You're doing it because you want to do it. You're participating. You're receiving feedback on it. And you're learning how to become better at it via participation. We're better at what we acquire. We're more knowledgeable about what we learn. So wouldn't it be better to just do them both at the same time? And yet technology in this day and age, especially when it comes to trust, isn't doing those things. It's doing half of the equation. It's teaching us. It's not helping us learn better. Um, that's pretty much my gameful input on this issue. Thank you.